I'm Natasha Brown with breaking news this afternoon from CBS News Philadelphia. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake has just struck in Lebanon, New Jersey. People say they are feeling the ground shaking across New Jersey and southeast Pennsylvania when this happened all the way up to Boston at this point. We're hearing reports. Let's get right over to meteorologist Andrew Kozak for the very latest on this earthquake. Yeah, it was very close to home, so we're not in our area, but in uh, in Hunterton County, this is going to be near Clinton Township. This is 278. I'll move the map a little bit just to kind of show you. We've got Easton, we've got Clinton Township. Lebanon is right here, right along this lake here, along 78. And I've circled the area where the likely location that we're seeing from the USGS uh, reports now a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. And I can tell you this: I was in the newsroom and working on some stuff for the eclipse. And I was actually zooming with somebody in Staten Island, New York, and their house started to shake. And I said, wait a second, I'm feeling something here. So it was here. It was all the way as far north as New York City. And now we're hearing even as far north feeling it as Boston, out in Long Island. And again, this was centered in Lebanon, New Jersey, which, of course, is further away from our area. It's up toward the New York City area in New Jersey, central in, in northern New Jersey. But again, that's where it is. I'll kind of zoom in. There's Philadelphia. And here we go into 100 and County and where Lebanon is is where I've uh, hit that. Now, on the scale of things when it comes to earthquakes, a 4.9 or more is considered a moderate. Anything less than 4.9 is considered minor. But at 4.8, this is actually considered on the top end of minor. And people have been sending us reports now of some furniture moving around and things like that. Uh, as far as aftershocks go, because a lot of people are going to be asking that question, it is possible with an earthquake of this magnitude, or really with any earthquake, to have some aftershocks after the fact, of course. But some of those might be less of a magnitude, so we may not feel it in our area. We have to see that remains to be seen. But we will continue to watch this for you, of course. We're getting fresh information into the newsroom. Want to make sure you keep it here. And of course, we're going to be streaming and bringing you fresh information on CBSPhiladelphia.com. Natasha? Andrew, thank you so much. I know our phones are ringing off the hook with people reporting this to us. We are waiting to hear if there are any reports of any damage. Our coverage of this breaking news does continue for you now on our streaming service, so please follow us there. Here on television, we're going to send you back to Let's Make a Deal, and we'll have the latest, of course, today at noon. I'm Natasha Brown. Well, we're actually going to stay with this because clearly this is the biggest news that I've certainly heard in a long time. I've never had uh, breaking news coverage that I've had to interject to talk about an earthquake in this area. So let's get back to Andrew right now. He is getting the very latest for us. We know this happened in Lebanon, New Jersey. Uh, Andrew, let's talk about how rare this is for our area. Again, I've been doing this a long time, but never had to step in to do earthquake coverage here. No, we're on the East Coast, not the West Coast, right? But this does happen in, in many areas. In fact, this can happen along any areas that have the plates. In fact, I used to live in Memphis, Tennessee, and there's a big fault underneath Memphis where they actually do have earthquakes there. In the meantime, for us, yes, we have seen some shifting of the plates, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Here's Philadelphia in our region. This is as you travel up just north of Trenton in Hunterdon County. It's going to be near Lebanon. So there's Bridgewater, New Jersey. There's Edison, New Jersey, Staten Island, New York City there, just on the other side of your screen. And then there's 78. 78 borders Clinton, and then you have Lebanon. I've circled that here, and this is exactly where the center of that 4.8 magnitude earthquake uh, hit and shook the region. We felt it here in Philadelphia. We've had reports feeling it as far north as Boston, as far east as out in Long Island, and of course the New York City area. Now, 4.8, when it comes to the magnitude of earthquakes, is still considered minor. But 4.9 and below is minor. So we're getting on the higher end of things here. So we haven't had any major reports of damage, thankfully, yet. But we have had reports, people calling our newsroom and letting us know that they have seen things shake around, some furniture move, things like that. We're going to continue to compile all of that for you and bring you fresh information as it comes in. In the meantime, the other question with this is, what about aftershocks? So aftershocks are usually going to be less than the actual uh, magnitude earthquake that it hit. But remember, you start getting in the 2 and 3 point five magnitude range, that type of deal, it's very difficult to actually feel it much further away from the actual center. So we'll have to see about that. In the meantime, we're still compiling information. We're going to have fresh information coming in. This again happened in Lebanon, New Jersey. Uh, I believe it happened about 1023. 
uh, this uh, this morning. So that will continue to be something that we're going to continue to watch for. Obviously, we will uh, likely get some more information out of central and northern New Jersey. Again, this happened right there in Hunterton County. 4.8 magnitude earthquake has shook the region from central and northern New Jersey down toward Philadelphia, the shore, and all the way up toward as far north as Boston. Of course, we're going to continue to watch this for you. The USGS continually puts out fresh information since this is so fresh, just happening less than a half hour ago. So we will continue to watch for fresh information coming in for you and bring you the very latest here on CBS News Philadelphia. Of course, coming up at noon, we're going to have updates for you there as well. Um, I'm going to send it back over to Natasha because we have some uh, some more inf information to tell you. And of course, we want to make sure that you also know you can stay ahead if you're away from your TV or streaming always at CBSPhiladelphia.com. And Andrew, again, you're talking about how these updates come fast and furiously about the magnitude of earthquakes like this. The U.S. Geological Survey now saying this is a 4.7 magnitude earthquake now. It's varying just a bit. The epicenter happening outside of White House Station, New Jersey. Again, still Hunterdon County, New Jersey, where this, the epicenter of all of this uh, was felt the most. Tell me a little bit about, uh, Andrew, if you even know, just uh, overall, when the, uh, we're talking about the epicenter happening in this particular area, but we're talking about people calling into us uh, and we're hearing about people feeling this not just here in Philadelphia but from here Delaware New Jersey New York and even all the way up to Boston yeah. so let's talk about the trickle effect of something like this you know it's almost it's very interesting because it's not really truly weather right because it is down at the ground but it's like the same thing when we talk about when we send out a radar beam right uh, the further away you get from the site of the radar the more diverse and dispersed all of the beams get. And it's the same thing with the epicenter of an earthquake. The further you get away, the more spread out it is and the less you're going to feel it. So if you're in Hunterton County, and I know that we said Lebanon, but the fresh information, remind me, it was white... Uh, uh, white House, uh, yes. White House, uh, of course. So we're going to get... Uh, or, oh, right here, okay. It's still Hunterdon County. Okay, yeah. so there's Lebanon, but now with the fresh information coming in from the U, uh, USGS, it is now White House. So just a little bit further to the east. I'm going to go ahead and adjust that map a little bit more uh, the next round on this just to show you. We'll move this circle a little closer here, but that's where the epicenter is. So to answer Natasha's question, many of you I'm sure as well, the further away you get from the epicenter, the less you're going to feel it. That means that if you know anybody along this area from Lebanon over toward White House and probably most of central New Jersey, they definitely felt the shaking more. As you move a little further away in, the, in a concentric circle away, you're going to feel it less and less and less. So here in Philadelphia, we certainly felt the building shake here, even at our studios here at CBS Philadelphia. But those folks as far north and out of the way as Boston definitely felt a little bit as well. So we're going to try to see if we could get some reports in pretty, pretty soon from this area of New Jersey because no doubt the epicenter, that's where the actual plates shifted against each other. That's where we're going to see uh, the most potential damage, if there was any damage. Hopefully not, but that's where we would see the most potential. That's where people felt this the worst uh, and the most dramatic is going to be right across where that epicenter took place. Natasha? Yeah, and we're also just uh, hearing now, uh, Andrew, because as you can imagine, we're talking about our phones ringing off the hook in our newsroom, all of us looking at each other like, was that an earthquake? Everyone feeling this, but since we're not used to feeling something like this, the first thing you think to do possibly is call 911. So Philadelphia police just uh, tweeting out, please do not call 911. They're well aware uh, that this was an earthquake, but this is not a police emergency type of situation. So, but again, it just shows you the gravity of what we're dealing dealing with here on the East Coast, especially here in this area, not being used to dealing with something like this. I mean, so what do you do? Well, I mean, it's one of those things where you, you remember you're in school and you talk about earthquakes and you see all the video when you're studying, you know, geology, even, even, even in school uh, when you're younger. But the thing is, is other people in other parts of the country they deal with this in a lot more of a dramatic fashion. Let's say California, for example. So we don't typically even think about this very often in this part of the country, even the severe weather that we talk about. We talk about tornado watches, warnings of what to do during severe weather, but earthquakes, it's not something that we deal with often. And certainly a 4.8, while it is not a very strong earthquake for this area, it is rare. So it is something, again, as we we just told you right now, don't call the police, clog up the lines with that. Uh, I would say if you are in an area, if you're in a building that already wasn't maybe the most structurally sound and it f felt like it was shaking, probably a good idea to not stay in there. And if you have any questions, obviously err on the side of caution. In the worst times of an earthquake, 
the best thing to do always is to get underneath the mattress, to get in the hallway, to get out of any building, especially if you're high up. Um, but again, Natasha, it's not something that we typically uh, talk about very often in this area. Again, to recap, the 4.8 or now 4.7, we'll get that corrected because the fresh information, the update was now a 4.7 magnitude earthquake was actually located over White House. So again, with these type of things, they try to get information out as quick as possible and it does get fine tuned as more information comes in. So I circle Lebanon. It was very close. It's over toward White House. So we'll get that corrected for you here with the next update. But that's what we've seen. 4.7 over White House and that's in Hunterton County, New Jersey. If I go back a little bit more, it's right just to the north of Philadelphia. As you see, there's Trenton and then there's Hunterton County here along 78. That takes you into Pennsylvania from New Jersey. It also takes you right across into the New York City metro area as well. That is located between Clinton and Bridgewater, two areas I know that are uh, popular as well. So that's what we have right now. It is a rare occurrence, but it is an occurrence. 4.9 would be the threshold for a minor earthquake. So this is still within that minor realm, but it's a little bit on the higher side, being at a 4.7. Any time you go, by the way, between a four and a five category when it comes to the earthquake magnitude, that's when you're going to start to see some damage. Anything less than that, usually not. So that means that most likely there are at least some areas up here that may have seen some damage as new information continually comes in literally every second to our newsroom. We will continue to keep you updated uh, on if we have anything there. So far, though, we did feel the building shake here in the city of Philadelphia, as far south as Philly, as far north as Boston, and as far east out in the southern, uh, I should say, the eastern tip of Long Island. Again, a 4.7 earthquake in the White House area. Again, there's Lebanon there, and there's the White House area just to the south and the east. I'm getting some, some information if you guys want to. Yeah, yeah, oh, it Andrew, is now, it is it's to, now back to a 4.8. Uh, so that's how fluid this is. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that as well. We're seeing this kind of the fluidity and the magnitude of this. So I think we've all seen those news reports with the needle, you know, shakes. That, mm -hmm. uh, so they have to actually go through. And a lot of times it's, it's on a computer, but a lot of times it's just scientists, geologists looking at this information and seeing where it falls. And if there's just a little bit of a spike between a 4.7 and a 4.8, and then they go back and forth. But yes, now we know this is now a 4.8. And listen, it may change as well, depending also on any type of damage that we may see coming in reports from this area. But a 4.8 magnitude earthquake has now shook the region. Again, it is uh, centered in White House Station, New Jersey, which is right there along 22. There's Highway 78, 22. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step out of the way real quick. And what I actually want to do, since we're staying with you guys and showing you where this all is, is I do want to circle now the correct area um, that the, uh, in the updated area, and that's going to be White House. Let me hit save. And there we go. So now that is on there. So White House uh, Station, New Jersey. And again, that is uh, just to the north and to the west, uh, north and to the east of the Trenton area. Um, you know what I'm going to do too is I'm going to show you with our measurement to just how uh, close that is to the Philadelphia area. As I zoom back down, and there's uh, Norristown. So we're starting to get a little bit closer to our area. And there's Philadelphia. We could actually take our measuring to Phil Philadelphia all the way up to White House, and that's just exactly. Uh, just approximately 50 miles. So that is 50 miles away from us, uh, give or take a mile or two. But that's where we are right now. That is actually not that far away uh, from where the epicenter is. And no doubt that is why we felt that here in, uh, in, in the Philadelphia area. They felt it all across New Jersey. And again, the New York City area felt it as well. So this is uh, really where the epicenter is, White House Station, New Jersey, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. And if you're just joining us, I was explaining a little earlier, when you get from the one, the two, the three magnitudes, you might feel a little shaking. But once you get above a four, that's when we generally see sometimes a little bit of damage with this. Now, I haven't seen any reports yet in Philadelphia. Our newsroom is being flooded with phone calls and messages. We will continue to keep you updated with any fresh info there. But it is likely that if that holds true, that we possibly would see some damage or at least hear about some damage in northern New Jersey. Uh, once you get to about a four or a five, then we have to talk about the aftershock. So do not be alarmed if within the next hour, two hours, even into the next couple of days, you might feel a little shaking. Aftershocks are usually less of a magnitude than the initial earthquake, but we might see some uh, or feel, I guess you could say, uh, some aftershocks here over the course of the next couple of hours, even into the next couple of days. So that's another thing to uh, alert people. And Natasha, I know we were telling everybody as well, we were hearing um, from the police officially saying, um, you do not need to call them and clog up the lines with this. Um, we know what's going on and the USGS and officials are getting to the bottom of 
going over exactly what this was, we did say 4.8. Mm -hmm. That may also be adjusted truthfully over the course of the next couple of hours or even a couple of minutes as new fresh info comes in. Um, but what we know is an earthquake did hit New Jersey. That's White House Station in Hunterton County. And that's about 50 miles away from us, but we're still hearing people who have felt this all the way up to Boston as we've been talking about, Andrew, just the ripple effects and the tremors. Uh, and also, we do have some new information as well. We know that PATCO service is suspended right now as they assess and inspect the line. So this is, uh, again, affecting uh, lots of infrastructure as well. As you can imagine, they want to make sure that everything is safe in terms of uh, public transportation and those lines there linked to PATCO. Again, this is a, a New Jersey epicenter here in Lebanon uh, County, New Jersey, Lebanon, New Jersey. Um, and we are going to continue to follow what folks are telling us as well about what they felt. Uh, again, our phones are ringing off the hook in the newsroom. We're getting information fast and furiously here. We know that some folks are calling in to say that their furniture was ultimately just moving across the floor uh, in some parts of the area as well. That's how, how much they felt the tremors. Uh, we certainly felt them here in our newsroom. Uh, my family in Delaware telling me that they felt it there um, all the way up to folks in New York and, and as far as Boston. So uh, we are still gathering more information just about damage as you heard Andrew say because again the closer you are to the epicenter uh, as you've heard Andrew say uh, the more you are likely to have felt this uh, this earthquake and also possibly uh, the more damage you're likely to see around that epicenter area there at White House Station New Jersey uh, but again Andrew let's let's get the latest here from you and what you're seeing and, and what you know about how rare again this is of an occurrence here in this area yeah now look it's not rare to have a little bit of a tremor a little very low end magnitude we've seen um, even since uh, you know the last couple of years, one, two, three point something magnitude. Usually, unless you're right underneath that epicenter, you'd feel it. But 4.8, as minor as that still is, it still is only 0.1 away from the threshold. Anything 4.9 or less would be considered minor. So we're getting close to what is really a very rare occurrence across the area. Again, I want to go back out really quick and kind of show you. There's Philadelphia, there's New Jersey, and we're getting in Hunterton County. And this is going to be, again, north of our area. We cover up to about Trenton. There's Bridgewater, there's Clinton. Get in a little bit closer. There's 78. That takes you to PA that way, takes you to New York that way. And there's White House, White House Station, right along uh, Highway 22. That's takes you up toward Lebanon if you're moving toward west. That is where the epicenter is. So we are going to get some fresh information, sending it back to Natasha real quick. Natasha, what's up? All right, well, we know that our chopper, Andrew, is launching now to assess any damage, any aerial damage uh, that we can see uh, from above near where this all happened there in White House, uh, New Jersey. Uh, again, that's the epicenter there. This happened about 1023 this morning. The U.S. Geological Survey putting this at a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Uh, again, that magnitude of an earthquake, as you heard Andrew say, is certainly a rarity for this area here along the East Coast. But we're hearing folks that have felt some tremors, some shaking. We certainly felt it here in the newsroom here in Philadelphia, Delaware, New Jersey, uh, New York, all the way up to Boston at this point. Not sure about how far south you're possibly going to uh, get any reports of this, but that's what we're feeling here in the tri-state area and just outside of our, our area here as well. So uh, again, we're still getting more information just about, you know, uh, damage possibly. Uh, again, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake uh, that's hit at about 1023 this morning. Andrew, what more can you tell us just about what you're hearing uh, right now? Well, I, I did see a message somebody in Cape May that said that they had felt it down there as well. Again, that's not uh, too surprising uh, considering, again, New Jersey is a uh, not a tiny state. It's not Rhode Island, but it certainly is not a, a, a you know, a large state. So we are going to be looking at uh, this area being really where we're probably going to see the most uh, effects from it. People in Bridgewater, Edison, New Jersey, over toward uh, Clinton, and anywhere along 78. 4.8 magnitude earthquake, White House Station, New Jersey. Um, should I show the video? Are we going to go up to the video? Because I believe we have that. Uh, okay. So, I, funny thing is, I was actually in the newsroom doing a Zoom about the eclipse coming up on Monday. I was uh, talking to my father, who's a NASA ambassador, and I, I was, what are, you, what are you doing? This is what we're doing. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm talking to him. I said, Dad, Dad, what are you, what are you doing? We're, we're trying to zoom here. And, he's, and I thought he was maybe shaking the desk. And he goes, the, the house is shaking. And then as soon as he said that, I felt that on my 
on my end here in, in, in the city, too. Oh, he's in Staten Island, New York, I should say that, by the way. So that's uh, New York City area, Staten Island, New York, uh, which is much closer, obviously, along 78. So just to give you an idea, uh, let me go ahead and uh, zoom back out again. So this is, uh, this is actually Staten Island right here on the edge of your screen, and this is where it is, right here along 22. So we're talking, uh, in many cases, probably about 30 miles or so away, so even closer there. So again, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake has shook the region across uh, northern New Jersey. This is going to be White House Station. Uh, really, anytime you go to a 4 or a 5 magnitude is when you start to not only feel it, quite a bit, but also see some damage. I will say this, if there are any really not so great structures out there, especially close to this area, right where the epicenter was, there probably will be some damage from that at this point. 4.8 on the large scale of things is not a major earthquake, but for this area, for this area, it is considered on the rare side of things. We typically see two or three, but this is a, a little bit more on the rare side. The other thing I want to point out, and I've been saying this all morning, is that the question on people's minds after this is that, do we have aftershocks? Will we feel aftershocks? And the, the answer to that is, likely we will see aftershocks. They usually will not be as strong as the initial earthquake itself. So I'm not expecting that we'll see anything close to a 4.8, but sometimes that does happen. So just be prepared for that. Uh, you know, console your pets. They might be scared, especially if they were close to on the northern end of our viewing area where this is. Uh, and yes, obviously this is what the big talk about the day is. And the other thing I want to remind people again, Natasha, as we stream, uh, do not call the police, especially if we have another aftershock uh, or another earthquake uh, or possibly aftershock. Um, they don't, do not want the lines clogged up. Of course, if you are in danger, absolutely, absolutely do. But for the earthquake, we all know what's going on. And we're going to continue to get some fresh information. I know you said our chopper is now uh, headed toward the area as well. So we are going to continue to watch and bring you fresh information yeah. as well. Yeah, we should definitely get more, at least from that aerial perspective there, to see if there is any damage closer to that White House Station, New Jersey area, which served as the epicenter of this 4.8 magnitude earthquake, Andrew. And we're also getting uh, some information here from the governor of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Governor John Shapiro just posted this on X. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake hit New Jersey and was felt in parts of Pennsylvania. My team and Pima HQ, Pima headquarters, are actively monitoring the situation and in contact with counties on any damage. We will keep Pennsylvanians updated. So, of course, we are just getting information in. This is all happening uh, pretty quickly here. It's a fluid situation. Uh, we have lots of folks that have been calling in to give us their perspective on what they felt and giving us their assessment of what they felt at 1023 this morning when the U.S. Geological Survey does say that there was a 4.8 magnitude earthquake that hit that North Jersey area, White House Station, New Jersey. Uh, again, Philadelphia police uh, telling us initially don't have, don't call 911. Uh, uh, that shouldn't be a factor now that folks know what's happening. We don't want to clog up the lines there. Uh, but again, a PATCO line, we understand, has been suspended while they assess the lines because this was enough, obviously, uh, of a, a tremor, a, a magnitude, 4.8 magnitude earthquake that may have jarred some lines or caused some damage on the PATCO system as well. Uh, so we have no damage reports in Philadelphia, but again, we we're about, uh, I think Andrew said about 50 miles or so from the epicenter of where this happened up in a White House Station, New Jersey. Uh, we're hearing reports that this has been felt all the way from Delaware to Boston here along the East Coast uh, and the Northeast Corridor here. So we are definitely uh, still gathering information uh, and also trying to assess any damage reports as well closer to the epicenter of where this happened. So we're going to stay on top of this. We're waiting to hear if there are any uh, any updates as well. We just heard from the governor who says he's got a team launching as well to assess any damage here in the Pennsylvania area. So let's get back over to Andrew Kozak. He's been uh, giving us an update on the rarity of this magnitude yes. of an earthquake uh, at this point in this area. Yeah, and Natasha, I do want to be clear that anything underneath a 4.9 is considered minor. But 4.8 is getting close to that threshold. And for this area, that is pretty rare uh, for the most part. We definitely do see earthquakes from time to time, really almost anywhere across the country. But for it to be a 4.8, 
uh, that is something, and I'm going to get some information as soon as we uh, have some time to kind of compile that. But see, the last, see when the last time was that we saw an earthquake of this magnitude. Again, it wasn't in Philadelphia. It was felt in Philadelphia. There's Bridgewater, New Jersey. And see this highway that goes right over here? This is 78. 78 and 22 move over toward White House uh, Station, New Jersey. And that is just about 50 miles northeast of the Philadelphia area, 50 miles. That's not that far away. So it was a 4.8 felt there, and that means that we did feel the shaking here. We'll have to again continue to see if we have any damage reports from our area or the area here. We just launched our chopper in the air, so we're going to get some aerial footage and also get some more reports. Uh, we want to thank you guys, by the way, those of you that have called the newsroom with reports in. We're getting our phone call, our phone lines flooded with calls and fresh information. 4.8 was where the USGS said we had that in White House Station. The shaking was felt as far south now as southern New Jersey, as far north as Boston. I'm sure those of you watching from Allentown, maybe all the way down toward the Lancaster area, felt it as well, because it really is an epicenter where everywhere you go out, like in a, in a perfect circle, you would go and feel it less and less the further out you go. It was felt in Staten Island, it was felt in New York, and all the way out in eastern ends of Long Island. So that's what we're seeing right now. I want to get in a little bit uh, closer really quickly now and kind of show you where this is. There's White House Station. I'll zoom back out again. There's New York City. And then there's Bridgewater, and White House Station is just to the west of uh, Bridgewater, New Jersey, along 22, and there's 78 right here. So this area of New Jersey, uh, it's a little bit further north than we typically broadcast to, but we will continue to uh, get some information out of here. It's a lot, uh, this is an area where there is a lot of people that commute to and from New York City. It's a, a pretty well populated area, uh, very suburban, so we're going to have to see if there's any damage there. In the meantime, here at home, we did feel it, obviously. Uh, it is something that is a more of a rare occurrence in, these er in this part of the country, for sure. Uh, if this was in a place like L.A. or San Francisco, uh, they typically see this a little bit more often. But we obviously felt it. And we're going to get some information for you, get, make sure that you are uh, well uh, informed about what kind of damage, if we saw some damage across the area. The other thing I want to make sure that everybody understands, too, because the, the first question that people uh, ask is, what about after? shocks or is this it? Could we see more? Well, obviously, the USGS is monitoring this very, very carefully, but typically in these situations, we would see some aftershocks. Also, typically, they are usually much less in magnitude than the initial earthquake. So that's good news, of course. So calm your fears. If anybody is uh, worried about that part, usually what happens is that it's less and less and less. It could happen within a few minutes. It could happen within a few hours. It could even happen within a few days. But that is something that we'll watch for. Again, anytime you would have a magnitude of a four or a five, that's when you start getting into that area of maybe there is some damage, in, uh, especially right close to where the epicenter is. That's what we typically see with this. But again, it is usually underneath a 4.9 that is still considered minor earthquake. So we're not expecting this to be anything major. Of course, and Natasha, you could say the same thing as well. We have seen it go back and forth between 4.8, 4.7. That's all the geologists going through this at the USGS and taking a look and making sure that what we're putting out there, what the information they're putting out there is correct. And with all of this fresh coming in, mm -hmm. uh, really less than 45 minutes ago at this point, we're still getting that, that information in there. And I know that uh, the governor put out a statement, and I know uh, you said that we have now launched our chopper, so we should be getting some uh, some fresh pictures. I was going to say certainly in time for noon, but maybe before that, hopefully. Yeah, we certainly are, are going to get those to you as soon as we get some more information, more visuals from Chopper, who's heading to that scene closest to White House Station there in New York to see if there's any damage there. Uh, we can tell you that PATCO service apparently has been suspended just out of an abundance of caution as they assess and inspect their lines in light of this earthquake, and this is what we know New Jersey Transit also posted on X or Twitter. Rail service system wide is subject to up to 20 minute delays in both directions due to bridge inspections following the earthquake. Governor Phil Murphy also posted that New Jersey has activated the State Emergency Operations Center. Again, the epicenter there happening in northern New Jersey, White House Station, New Jersey, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake that hit the area at 10:23 this morning. The U.S. Geological
Meteorological Survey. Uh, again, the fluidity of this has gone from 4.7 to 4.8 magnitude at this point. But again, uh, still a fluid situation, especially as Pennsylvania and New Jersey officials get crews out there to this area to see what damage, if any, has been done uh, at this point. So our chopper is going to give us much more of an aerial perspective on this once they get there uh, to see if there is any damage around that area. We were, our phone lines have been ringing off the hook in our newsroom with people just giving us a, an idea as to what they felt. Many folks saying they felt their furniture moving. Uh, many of them may have been sitting at one point. I understand my sister said she was sitting in, in a chair and just felt it shaking. She didn't know what was going on. She was like, what's happening? You know, we're just so not used to seeing or feeling something like this in this area. And I know that Andrew has been telling us overall, you know, it's it's not uh, a rarity to have tremors in a sense sure. in this particular area in the northeast corridor here, Andrew, but certainly a rarity to feel something like a 4.8 in this area, right? Just to give you an idea, Natasha, on that point, there are times when we're sitting back there in, in the weather center and we say, huh, Oh, look at that. A, a 2.3 just got reported, but we would never have known if we didn't know from that because we didn't feel it. So that's the type of thing we typically see. This is the more rare thing because we felt it before we even had any idea what was going on. We were all, a lot of us were in the newsroom and we felt the building shake. And, you, you know, sometimes you think, was that, a, was that a large truck outside? But no, that was an actual earthquake. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake has struck the region, not here, but 50 miles away. I put the banner all the way down where Philadelphia is, and I apologize. I can move that map up a little bit more. Uh, in fact, let me do that now just to kind of show you. There's uh, Philadelphia, and there it is. Bridgewater, New Jersey, right near the area where uh, that hit. That's exactly 50 miles away, and that's going to be in White House Station, New Jersey. So that's 50 miles to the northeast. That 4.8 hit about 10:23 this morning. So about 50 minutes ago, exactly at this point, it hit. And it's a rarity to have something this strong. Now, just to let you know, it is not a major not even a moderate earthquake. Anything under a 4.9 is still considered minor at this point, but it's still getting higher up on that threshold. The other thing to note, and I've said this a couple of times already this morning, is that four or five magnitude, when you start getting up in that category, you start to typically see some damage, even some minor damage. And we're going to let you know if we have any reports coming in. So far, we're compiling all that information. We have our chopper up in the air. If there's any damage in because of this earthquake, it's likely going to be closer to where that epicenter was just because the fact is it is a 4.8 considered minor. Less of a chance that we're seeing it anywhere in the Philadelphia area, but again, there is always the possibility when you have the tectonic plates that shift uh, that any poorly made structures or anything that's, uh, you know, maybe a structure that's already kind of falling apart uh, might be damaged by this. So this is something also that we are going to watch very carefully for you. The other thing is, of course, is the aftershocks, and that is something that we may see over the course of the next couple of minutes, couple of hours, couple of days. So we're going to watch that very carefully. Uh, the USGS, the Geological Survey, they are the ones that go ahead and they take a look at all this. We have earthquake monitors all the time, 24-7 running around the clock. And as that new information comes in and as they go ahead and take a look at this, they're going to continue to tweak where the center was. Although at this point now, it does look like it's been several, uh, several minutes, actually probably more like the last half hour, that the correction has been White House Station and a 4.8 rather four than 4.7. So that's probably going to be where it stands. If that changes, we'll let you know. But again, this was felt as far north as Boston, here in Philadelphia, as far south as New Jersey, probably, probably even more uh, south than there. And of course, New York City and the eastern end of Long Island. Again, a 4.8 is still considered minor, but for this area and for the fact that it's getting close to that threshold of moderate, Natasha, uh, it's pretty much a rarity in these, uh, in these parts of the country. I certainly know it's a rarity. I think this, I think, Andrew, I have to check this out again, but the last time I think we felt anything like this was maybe eight, nine years ago um, in this area. I was going to say, that sounds about right because, uh, and I mentioned this just a couple minutes ago, we typically, from time to time, will get in uh, updates that say, hey, there was a 2.3 or there was a 2.7, and it's one of those like, Oh, that's interesting. Let's see where it is. Let's check it out. Tammy Sue's is really good at that because she nerds out over all of this <laughs> stuff. But this is something that we don't see very often at all. When yeah, we're just hearing. Like my producer just told me it's 2011, Andrew. That's 2011? how long ago this okay. was. Yeah.
All right, so 13, 13 years yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then that, and there you go. So that is why this is a, a rarity uh, in these parts. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, and we do this all the time when we talk about severe weather, tornadoes, things like that, is we don't want anybody to panic, everybody to, to remain calm with this, because yes, there may be some aftershocks. So I, I do want to stress that if you feel something shaking later on today or even within the next couple of days, it is likely an aftershock. It will likely be less than a 4.8 magnitude. So just to calm your fears there, uh, we're not expecting, this is not the prelude to a bigger one. Uh, it is usually going to be less than that. Again, we're, it's going to be very interesting once we get the full report from the USGS to show exactly what happened, because we could go in and take a look exactly at what's going on with the plates and the shifting. Uh, listen, this is something that happens. As rare as it is, the last time was 13 years ago. And I want to check, too, uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. We'll have to see what the magnitude was back in 2011. Uh, just to compare it with this would be interesting. But some of you might remember that was the last time that we truly felt the ground shaking from an earthquake in this area, Natasha. Yeah, and I remember, um, because my, I'm from Virginia, my parents were down there, and that is, they felt it the most. The epicenter was somewhere close to Virginia, somewhere in Virginia at that point, and it was definitely, uh, certainly felt uh, in that area. Uh, but again, Andrew, we're getting some more information as well from public transit uh, from New Jersey to Pennsylvania. We just want to give you this update. Also, SEPTA sending us this statement. There are no reports of any damage or injuries. This is SEPTA again. All services are operating on normal schedules. Workers are inspecting tunnels, bridges, and other equipment just to make sure that everyone is safe and everything is safe. Now, on PATCO, this is PATCO we're seeing here. They posted on X here, crews will inspect the integrity of the line out of an abundance of caution. Once the inspection is complete, service will resume. No time frame just yet updates to follow. So, of course, we're going to be following them as well. We're going to bring you the latest information there. We can also tell you we have information that Philadelphia International Airport is operating normally as well. They have not been affected by this and their services at the airport uh, not affected at this point. Uh, but again, the biggest concern here when it comes to public transportation, those lines, the integrity of the lines out of an abundance of caution, you see that New Jersey Transit is certainly checking their lines. Pat Co suspending service for the moment, trying to assess their lines as well. Again, all of this out of an abundance of caution in the rarity of this moment, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake that hit in the North Jersey area, White House Station, New Jersey. Uh, that certainly uh, affected all of us at this point here in the Northeast Corridor. Uh, from here all the way up to Boston, we felt the tremors. So we are staying on top of this and bringing you the latest. I know Andrew is updating his computer. He's getting new information as well. Andrew, what more can you tell us? Well, it's just it's good now that obviously this is going to be the official one because now my computer just updated with the uh, earthquake. Uh, this is actually well to the north of where it actually hit, but uh, this should hopefully move down. But it is a 4.8, 10.23, and the depth was about a mile down. So that's where the instrumentation can go and actually monitor how far down the plate shifted. So it's about a mile beneath the Earth's surface is where we saw the 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Again, that was located in White House Station, New Jersey. That is Hunterdon County, a little bit closer to the New York City area. Um, really, the way that the, just so you know, the way that the television markets work, it's just about Tom's River over, kind of slicing Jersey in half. So this would be the northern end of New Jersey. White House is located right along 22. There's Highway 70. That takes you to the west, back into Pennsylvania. That takes you to the east, all the way through New York City and into uh, the Staten Island area, and eventually into Long Island, Brooklyn, and those areas. This is where it hit, and it is about 50 miles away from our area. So I'm kind of zooming out, and I do have the clouds and the radar layer on there. But there's Philadelphia, and there's where that uh, earthquake hit there, about 50 miles away. So that said, when you look at this, and this is where the epicenter was, it's kind of like a concise circle. The further out you go in all directions from an earthquake, the less you're going to feel the effects. Uh, so if you felt like there was pretty intense shaking in your area, and let's say you're joining us from Philadelphia or somewhere along the Jersey Shore further south, imagine what it would feel like for those folks in this area, likely a 4.8 Obviously, it's not that strong when it comes to the magnitudes, but 4.5, uh, 4 to 5, I should say, that's when you really start to feel it. That's when we start to see some damage reports. So far, we have not heard that yet, but we are brand new in this, and it's just now about 58 minutes ago that this happened. So we're coming into about an hour afterward, 
Uh, and Natasha, we are getting some, some fresh information in about that. Our chopper is on our way to northern New Jersey, uh, to the White House station area to see if we could get some aerial views. And of course, the good news so far, and we always want to talk about the good in, in, in these type of situations, especially when we're still finding out everything fresh, is that we haven't had any reports of damage or injuries from this area. SEPTA put out a statement. I know many officials have put out a statement. Uh, so that's good news here. And one further thing before I send it back to you, we've always talked about right after this happened, the flood of phone calls to 911 and the police. Please do not, especially if we have another earthquake or an aftershock, which should be a little bit less, uh, do not clog the lines. Obviously, if it's an emergency, then obviously do. But uh, we are not looking at this going to be a, a huge uh, aftershock coming up. We're just going to have to wait and see. But usually, if we do feel some more shaking and it's an aftershock, it should be usually less than the 4.8 magnitude that we saw initially. Well, Andrew, I just wanted to read this. I just got past this information as well. The USGS earthquakes uh, official site uh, tweeting this and putting this out. Earthquakes are uncommon but not unheard of all along the Atlantic coast. A zone one study called a, quote, passive aggressive margin because there's no active plate boundary between the Atlantic and North American plates, but there are stresses. So again, Andrew, it's just uh, reiterating what you've been saying. It, it is a rarity, uh, but certainly, um, you know, it's certainly not unheard common here in this area. So Derek Pitts, the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute, joining us now on the phone. Derek, thank you so much for joining us. This is certainly fairly rare for the East Coast. I think all of us were certainly shaken literally and physically by all of this. Tell us a little bit more about what you're hearing and, and what you know. Thanks for having me. What I know is that uh, this is uh, typical for the type of earthquake that's felt in this region every few years. The last time we had an earthquake like this was uh, back in 2011 and it was widely felt around the region. Uh, there is, I mean, uh, geologically speaking, there is uh, crustal adjustment going on in this region all the time. There are earthquakes of far lesser magnitude that happen, but we tend not to notice them because of the other background noise uh, of trucks and construction and things like that. So when we get above 3.5 magnitude up into four and beyond, that's when we actually start to feel it outside of all the other stuff that's happening. So this is not the type of earthquake that typically causes a lot of damage. There could be some outliers of things that have occurred as a result of this. But uh, I think what most people would say is that they felt it or maybe they didn't even feel it uh, because of uh, other background noise that's happening around them. And as far as aftershocks are concerned, the, you know, the lower the magnitude number, the greater the likelihood that there could be an aftershock, but we won't feel it. So it's not typical that we'll have an aftershock of the same magnitude in this case for this kind of earthquake. Yeah, and, and Derek, uh, just tell us a little bit more just about the science behind this because it is such a rarity here uh, to feel something like this, an earthquake on the East Coast. We see it all the time on the West Coast. We've just talked about the, the tragic, uh, intense uh, um, earthquake that was felt in Taiwan. We saw those, those horrific images there. So tell us more about the fault lines around here and why we don't see something as dramatic as what ha happens usually on the West Coast. The difference between here and the West Coast is that on the West Coast, we're looking at tectonic plate boundaries. And when tectonic plates collide with each other, they cause, you know, they're, they're tremendous faults, tremendous earthquakes, and tremendous volcanoes because of what's actually happening. I mean, you have whole pieces of continent diving under another piece of continent. And that's not what's going on here on the East Coast at all. A long, long time ago, two continents did collide, but then that split again and created the Atlantic Ocean. We have the suture line that runs up along the Appalachian chain, and we see those mountains as the result of that collision. But nowadays, more so, what we're seeing is we're seeing crustal adjustments that are happening at rather low levels in the crust, and these adjustments happen every few years. The most recent geologic uh, event that happened that we might point to, not saying this is the cause, but we might point to, is that 10 to 20 to 30,000 years ago, there was an ice sheet that stood at least a mile high, you know, just above the Philadelphia region going up north toward the pole. And the weight of that ice depressed the crust. Now, the ice is long gone, long gone, but we're still seeing the reaction of the crust as it makes its way back up in some instances. 
Not saying that's specifically what's going on here, but that's one of the mechanisms that could be causing the crustal adjustment that we see on the East Coast occasionally. Yeah, and so ultimately, just at its you know bare minimum here, Derek, when we're talking about what causes an earthquake, uh, just tell us a little bit more about that, and just you know what we're feeling here. What did we just feel, and, and how does this happen? Right. So what we're feeling is when the crust adjusts itself, mm -hmm. you have two adjacent rock units moving past each other in one way or another, either up and down or sideways. And when that sudden movement occurs, it creates shock waves that travel out through the rock, and almost everything sitting on top of the rock will experience that vibration from the shock. So if you felt some minor vibration this morning, you felt that vibration because the rock units moved, created a shock wave, and you felt some of that shock. Well, Derek, we certainly felt it here in our newsroom and all around the region here. So we do appreciate your explanation, your expertise in this. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get back with you in just a bit to get more information from you. Right now, CBS News Philadelphia reporter Marcella Bayetto, she's live in Logan Square, just uh, gauging the reaction of folks here in this area and what they felt, Marcella. Hi, Natasha. Yeah, I was in that newsroom just a little bit ago with you, and I wanted to kind of take you all through kind of how I experienced it while we were dealing with, you know, those shock waves. I was on the phone with a source for a different story that I was supposed to be on today until we got switched on to this earthquake. And, uh, you know, the person on the other line, we could hear rumbling, you could hear shaking on the phone. She's like, what was that? And I'm like, I have no idea. We get off the phone, and suddenly Andrew Kozak runs out into the newsroom and yells at everyone, did you feel that and so instantly we knew something was up and that we needed to get some reaction here though on the parkway you know we got people kind of minding their own business business as usual really here people walking around enjoying the sights uh, in the little bit of sun that we are getting for today as of now though we did put out some emails I've been calling different experts to see if we can get some more substantial information about what really people felt today and Drexel University there is a forensic structural engineer expert there and I was just on the phone with him a little bit ago and he explained you know what since it was only a 4.8 magnitude he says it was really light in comparison to some of the other earthquakes we've seen throughout the years and because of that he says he doesn't really think that there's too much of a structural impact to our area as of now but we are going to be speaking with him a little bit later to kind of break down those specifics for us um, in just a little bit so that should be coming in later today but as of now you know what people are just kind of enjoying the weather for today Today before you know anything else comes on through, but it's pretty normal out here on the Parkway. Back to you, Natasha. All right, just a little bit of a shock there for for a couple seconds or so earlier. Thank you so much, Marcella. We're also now learning that Philadelphia International Airport, the runways there at the airport, were closed for inspection right after the earthquake for about 10 minutes. But we know now that regular operations have resumed there at Philadelphia International Airport. Also, SEPTA operating normally as well. We know that New Jersey, the Patco service, and New Jersey Transit are inspecting their lines as well. So their service is being impacted, possibly delayed or suspended at this point. So please stay tuned uh, for any updates on those services there in New Jersey. Again, the epicenter happening there in North Jersey. So let's get back over to Andrew. He's been updating uh, information that he's getting as well, Andrew. You know, I, and I love getting all that information from the expert there to talk about that because as we talked about a little earlier, uh, the last time that we saw anything of this magnitude close to this area was back in 2011. And as you said, 4.8 is considered minor. And while we're not looking at uh, big plate shifting like they have out in California, the realignment, readjustment, as he was saying, did cause that 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Again, about 50 miles north and east of the Philadelphia area. I've gone ahead and circled that for you. This is going to be across the White House region. 4.8 is considered minor. Anything above 4.9 is actually considered more moderate. So we're on the higher threshold of that, which is why we felt it even as far south as Philadelphia, even further than that, down toward Cape May, Boston, and the New York City area. Again, once you start getting in that four to five range, that's when you really start feeling it. As far as damage is concerned, we haven't seen any reports in our area, but we are also getting some more info from areas up where the epicenter was. In typical situations, what happens is where the epicenter is, in this case, White House, 
in a perfect circle outbound in all directions, the further you go out, the less of an impact you're going to feel, the less chance you're going to have damage. Of course, structures depend on uh, what happens, depends on the, uh, how strong the structure is. But right now, what we're continuing to see is that we have had uh, really a lot of us just experiencing the shaking from this region. The depth of it about one mile down, 4.8. And again, that occurred at 1023 this morning. Uh, in this area. It is a rarity, and as we even talked about a little earlier, a lot of times we get earthquakes here 2, 2.5, 2.7. We know back in our weather center we get the information. You might know if you ever pay attention to the USGS survey, but most of us from day to day, even in those two to three, never feel it. This one we felt, which is why we're with you, giving you the updates, of course. Now, there may be some aftershocks with this. Likely, if we do get them, they're going to be way less than a 4.8. So that's something we'll also watch for you. Do not be surprised if you feel a little shaking later today, tomorrow, or even over the course of the next couple of days. So that's where we stand with that right now. Uh, we are getting some new uh, information coming in. Obviously, we've talked about the airport. We've talked about SEPTA, the trains. Everybody taking precaution, making sure that there is no damage, that everything is uh, completely okay as it was before and then everything sort of, uh, sort of resumes normal service which apparently right now it looks like we're right at that situation. So as we get a little closer to noon we're going to compile some more information for you. We're going to get some live reports. We also have our chopper heading in this direction as well Natasha so I know that we are going to uh, see right down to where the epicenter was over this community of uh, White House Station uh, Hunterton County to see if there is any damage uh, reported there where we had that 4.8. We will certainly get that, those images to you as soon as we get them from our chopper, Andrew. We do appreciate that. We know that our Joe Holden now is joining us live on the phone. Joe, what can you tell us and where are you? Hi, Natasha. I'm in Havertown, and uh, let me set the scene. I think we're going to pull up a tweet that uh, I sent out a short time ago. So I was making some rounds and doing some phone calls and trying to nail down some stories, actually, which is typical for a uh, morning during the week. And I heard this rattling and uh, I'll pause at some point you tell me when and you could probably pull up the sound full to hear these uh, storm windows rattling at first I thought wind then I thought large truck and uh, you know sort of uh, in comedy I'm trying to hang up the phone at the same time you know you can't roll video while making a phone call so you know I'm all thumbs trying to hang up and uh, I eventually do I capture this video and then you see a lantern sort of swinging and uh, my next phone call was to uh, Rich Kiss, our assistant news director. I said, Rich, we had an earthquake. And uh, it's sort of, um, it was something that, you know, you started hearing, uh, you know, all, and, and reading all sorts of reports, uh, people expressing the exact same thing. So, again, this lasted for maybe 15, 20, 25 seconds. And honestly, it's a very interesting experience. It's uh, somewhat a sort of it makes your legs rubbery after a while because you think your body is going through something of an unusual occurrence and then uh, your brain's like something's off here and uh, I'll pause now I don't know if we can re-rack and kind of listen to the, these windows rattling because that's what drew my attention. Yeah Joe I, I can only imagine just uh, what you heard there I think we're, li we're listening now let's listen in. Okay we can't hear it Joe but we can certainly see the movement there we can see the we can see the motion there and the trembling that, that we you felt there where you are. We certainly felt it here in Philadelphia in our newsroom, and we're hearing that these tremors were felt all the way up to the Boston area as well, all along this northeast corridor. We're going to head over to Ryan Hughes now. He's live at Temple University. Ryan, what can you tell us out there? Hey there, Natasha. Yes, we are hearing from staff and students that they definitely felt the earthquake here on campus. Uh, my photographer said his son was up in the Kutztown area. He also felt it in Berks County. And as you've been mentioning, we've been feeling it all around our area. And joining me now is Nick Devatsez, an associate professor with the Earth and Environmental Science Department. You said you were on the second floor near your office. Uh, describe what you felt during this time. Yeah, so during the, the quake, as you, as you uh, might expect, we felt an initial and then persistent shaking. Um, it actually might have been exacerbated by being on the second floor. It's very common in upper stories to have that that uh, long, tall building uh, amplify the effect of what's actually would be felt on the ground. And so we felt it for subjectively 10 or 15 seconds, but honestly, I, I want to check. I'm not 
memory is uh, never reliable and that sort of thing. Any windows shaking, anything on desks move, anything like that? No, it was pretty minor. I think in, in this case, not uncommonly, it wouldn't be that different than what you might expect from a very heavy truck or construction equipment happening. Uh, similar sort of amount of energy coming through the building. You and I were talking earlier. Talk about this earthquake, 4.8 in, in New Jersey. Is that rare to happen in the Northeast like this? No, actually, it's it's expected. So, you know, throughout the region, we expect earthquakes of this magnitude and, and many, many more that are smaller to be happening all the time. Uh, this size quake tends to happen on longer time scales relative to human lives. So, you know, yeah, years to decades. But you may remember uh, more recently, like the earthquake down near Washington, uh, a little over a decade ago. And then if you look back in the record, you'll see that sort of thing happening in the past. What can we expect after this earthquake? W will there be reports of damage? And, and what may that look like? There might be reports of damage, especially closer to the site. There should be minor damage at this sized quake, things like cracked windows, stuck windows, stuck doors. Um, this sort of quake, especially given construction practice that we enforce in the United States, helps prevent any significant damage. Older stone or brick buildings might see a little bit more because their stiffness tends to allow them to crack and accumulate minor damage in the way like a wooden structure that can sway with the quake like it does with the wind uh, might, might avoid that damage. What about what happens next when people think of earthquakes, they think of the aftershock. Can we, can we expect to see that? Yeah, aftershocks are expected. When, when an earthquake jostles the ground, it may nudge other uh, faults, near failure uh, by them. But in general, aftershocks are smaller than the shock that nudged them. And so what we should see is maybe some smaller quakes in the near area. And at this scale, those smaller quakes may not be something you actually feel. They just may not make enough sound, literally, uh, transmitted through the earth for you to feel it through your feet or your ears. Obviously, earthquakes can be very uh, dangerous, but for someone who studies science, how fascinating is this to, to happen, you know, in our backyard, not far from here? No, it's, it's fantastic. I, I teach a course this semester on structural geology, which is partly about the mechanics of faulting, and we teach courses in natural hazards here at Temple University, and it's a good demonstration of what really happens during those events, because there's nothing like feeling it. Uh, and it puts in context things like the recent earthquake in Taiwan, which was much, much larger an event in an area that's prone to larger events in a way that we're not. Yeah. And then just, you know, uh, we don't experience it very often here on the East Coast. And just the reports and the calls, the, I know the calls in the newsroom have been off the hook. Students talking about it on campus. It's just something that everyone's going to be talking about for a while. Yeah, I would think and two things to remember about where we live is there are a lot of people. And so we're going to notice these effects. And we live in a part of the country where the rocks are old, hard, and cold. And so they tend to transmit this energy a bit more effectively than other places. So. So that shaking actually goes, even though it's 50 miles from here, um, that shaking was more sensible here than, for instance, it might have been uh, in other parts of the country. Very good. Nick, we appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with us. Thank you so much. And, and Natasha, yes, it was definitely felt here on campus. Uh, down in South Philadelphia, we also heard that the link put out a tweet. It was felt there as well. So we're going to continue to talk to some folks here on campus to get their reaction to this earthquake earlier this morning. For now, though, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Ryan, thank you so much. We do appreciate that out there at Temple University. Also seeing the FAA put this out uh, a bit ago, just talking about air traffic at airports and how it's being affected by this. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake in New Jersey may impact some air traffic facilities in New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Baltimore. Air traffic operations are resuming as quickly as possible for real-time air traffic updates. Of course, uh, go to the FAA site or go to your uh, airline and try to find out exactly what the latest is with your flights as these airports are seeing ripple effects from from this 4.8 magnitude earthquake that hit in North Jersey. We're also uh, going to get back to Andrew Kozak now because he's got the latest information here on this earthquake. Andrew. Yeah, so obviously we're still getting the freshest information we can about this, but we do know if you're just joining us, obviously, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake that was reported in New Jersey, northern New Jersey. As I zoom in, you've got New York City, you've got Bridgewater here along 78, 22 when it comes up just to the west of Bridgewater. It's going to circle White House Station, and that is where the center of this is. About a mile down is where it was reported at 1023 this morning. 
and that is a 4.8. On the scale of things, when it comes to the magnitudes of earthquakes, anything under a 4.9 is considered minor. So yes, this is still a minor earthquake, but at 4.8, we're getting toward the top of that threshold a little bit. And what that typically means for us is that once you get into that 4 and 5 magnitude, that's when you really start to feel it. That's also when you start to see some damage. Now, so far, Knock on wood, we haven't seen anything in the Philadelphia region or our area, but we are also sending some crews and also getting some information from our chopper getting up there toward northern New Jersey to see if there is any damage reported in the White House Station area. So far, we have not seen any, but that may change. In the meantime, we also consider the fact that we usually do see earthquakes in this area, minor ones. We're talking 2.5, 2.7. A lot of times you start seeing those you don't really feel it. You wouldn't even know we had an earthquake unless you actually went and looked. And that's a lot of times that we in the Weather Center get the reports from the USGS. This time, it's a little different. 4.8 magnitude, that's a little bit more of a rare occurrence for this area of the country. And last time we had something close to this or even just above this was back in 2011. So we're talking about 13 years ago is the last time we saw uh, an earthquake that was a little bit stronger than this between a 4 and a 5. I believe it was a 5.8. So quite a bit stronger uh, back in 2011. So that's where we stand right now. We are continuing to watch this as fresh information comes in. But yeah, this, this happened at 1023 this morning. It is located, by the way, White House Station, about 50 miles north and east of the Philadelphia area. So so no doubt, the further you get away, like in a circle from the earthquake, the less you're going to feel it. So 50 miles away, we still felt the shaking. The further south you are from Philadelphia, the further southwest and southeast you are, you're going to feel it a little bit less and less. But they felt it as far north as Boston. They felt it as far east as the southern uh, and eastern tip of Long Island, and likely as far west as areas like Harrisburg and maybe even into central PA there along the turnpike. So we will continue to monitor this. We have been live with you for the better part of the last hour right now, getting statements in from the governor. I believe we have another statement coming in as well, uh, potentially from the White House. And we also have uh, local officials telling us that right now we don't have any emergency uh, situations going on in the Philadelphia area. But the good news is that all the transit, all of the people at the airport, everything has been tested, everything has been taken a look at, and so far, so good. Despite the fact that we did, about 50 miles away, have a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Again, that was in White House Station, New Jersey. That is in Hunterton County, just to the north of Trenton. Natasha? Yeah, certainly a jarring event here for this area. Andrew, thank you so much. We're going to stay with you. Uh, we just want to at least pass this along to you as well. We received this update from the White House, who's been briefed on everything at this point. We're told that President Biden has been briefed on the earthquake, and he is in touch with his team who are monitoring potential impacts. Now, the White House is in touch with federal, state, and local officials as we continue to learn more about the effects of this rare 4.8 magnitude earthquake that hit the White House Station, New Jersey area. That was the epicenter of it. At 10:23 this morning, the U.S. Geological Survey uh, flew it initially with this, going from 4.7 to 4.8 magnitude. Uh, Andrew's been talking a little bit about the fluidity of situations like this. Also, any aftershocks that may be felt uh, in the next uh, hours or so after something like this happens. Our chopper again has launched. It launched a bit ago to assess any damage, giving us an aerial view hopefully shortly of that White House Station, New Jersey area to see if there is any damage there, which is the closest part that was the epicenter of where this all happened. And obviously you would expect to see if there was any damage. That would be where most of it would be at this point. We're not seeing anything here in Philadelphia. Philadelphia International Airport operating normally at this point. SEPTA oper operating normally as well. The PATCO service and New Jersey Transit, of course, they are operating under an abundance of caution uh, by uh, assessing and inspecting their lines because, of course, again, this is a New Jersey event uh, where the epicenter of this all happened. So they are assessing their lines. There may be some delays there. And also we're hearing from the FAA that there may be some delays even still with some of the airports here in the East Coast, Baltimore, Philadelphia, uh, New Jersey. So you want to check with your air 
airlines just to make sure that your flight uh, is on time, just uh, out of an abundance of caution, again, uh, just making sure everything is okay. So uh, we are still getting more information. We've got crews uh, fanned out all across the region at this point. You heard our Joe Holden uh, sending us in some video, if we have that, just from his house there in Delaware County. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more ring phone, uh, ring camera video. If you guys do have some out there, some of our viewers, we'd love to see what you saw and felt as well in the moment that this happened around 1023 this morning. I'm sure there's got to be other video that, that many folks are gathering right now uh, that may give us some visual idea as to what this looked like and felt like as well. So let's head over to Steve Overmeyer now. He is from our sister station in New York City. He's live at Yankee Stadium with the latest on the effects there. Well, good morning to you. Well, good morning. This has been an eventful morning, uh, without a doubt. We were expecting that this is a day of pomp and circumstance and a celebration of tradition, but it turns out that it turned into something a little bit more. Sorry, I'm getting an emergency message on my phone right now. Well, it's beeping for me. Apologize. Um, that was distracting. But yes, we've been getting these emergency messages popping in on our phone uh, left and right. But uh, there has been, there was no damage here at Yankee Stadium. Some of the players felt it. Some of the players of the Toronto Blue Jays were actually in the clubhouse. They said that it felt like it was a train going overhead. They weren't sure exactly what it was. Player, the Yankees were out here taking BP at the time. Uh, the players who were outside, that were fielding ground balls, they said because we were moving around, we really didn't feel anything. But the guys who were standing still said they did feel a little bit of a tremor. It was nothing that they that scared. There is no issues here at, at Yankee Stadium. The fans have started to file in, but right now this is uh, this is a, an atmosphere that is uh, getting ready for what is going to be the home opener for the Yankees and getting excited for the upcoming season with a little trepidation as to wondering, will there be an aftershock that comes very soon? Because, of course, you're going to be a little nervous wondering if, uh, if something like that's going to happen. But, but here, for the most part, uh, everybody was in, uh, you know, in good spirits, but a little bit of a mixed bag as to who actually felt it or not. Yeah, it's good to see that they're still in a festive mood there, Steve, and getting ready for the big game today uh, there in New York. We do appreciate you uh, giving us some perspective on what you guys felt up there. Thank you so much. Let's head now to Chopper Live. Chopper 3 is live over 30th Street Station at this point. Workers are inspecting the tracks. That is happening on the New Jersey side as well. New Jersey Transit, also Patco inspecting their lines after something like this happens. Again, the rare occurrence that we feel uh, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake in this region. Uh, there clearly have to be precautions that have to be taken, especially when you're talking about mass transit, these lines, making sure that they are still in place and in intact and nothing has been damaged before they continue uh, to operate. So from what we understand now, SEPTA sending us information earlier that they are still operating on a normal schedule at this point, outside of the fact that they are still assessing their lines as we can see there as Chomper 3 is hovering above this area here where SEPTA workers are out there making sure that the lines are still intact, not rattled, not shaken, and not disturbed in any way. Uh, so that's what we're seeing here. And the after effects, the aftermath of this 4.8 magnitude earthquake that hit the area 1023 this morning, the epicenter there in North Jersey, White House Station, New Jersey. So let's get over now to Andrew. He's been obviously assessing the situation, both of us rushing here into the studio, Andrew, both of us. Uh, for me, my first breaking news to have to deal with the earthquake news as it relates to this area. Didn't have that on the bingo card today, I'm sure. No. No, but you know what? Here's the thing. I love seeing that, that they're checking because even though this is considered minor, it can affect so much infrastructure and, you know, better safe than sorry. So it is nice to be rest assured that mass transit, the runways, all of that is being inspected. I know Philadelphia International, they were closed just for a little bit. Now, I will say this. If you know anybody or if you yourself have flights out of Newark, that is much closer to this than uh, Philadelphia Airport, obviously. So that may be one that has some cancellations or delays, at least some delays for the time being, inspecting those runways. Obviously, Newark Airport being one of the busiest airports uh, in the country, and certainly in the region. So we'll keep our eye on that. In the meantime, the epicenter 50 miles away from Philadelphia, north and east. If you could draw a straight line, obviously, to get to White House Township, it would take a little bit 
uh, longer than that, but uh, or White House Station, I should say, New Jersey. But yeah, just there on the line. Uh, we've got clouds in place. We'll go back and we'll talk about the weather in just a little bit. But we do want to concentrate on this: the 4.8 magnitude earthquake. It happened at 10:23 this morning at White House Station, New Jersey, and we felt it here in Philadelphia. This was the first time that we felt an earthquake of this magnitude since 2011. And I mentioned this earlier, a couple things to point out. Number one is that we get earthquakes from time to time, sometimes 2, 2.5, 2.8, but we don't feel that at all. So unless somebody told you or unless you subscribe to the feed from the USGS, uh, the geological survey, you would not know. But this is one where we all felt it. We were in the newsroom. We felt it. I was actually uh, doing a Zoom call with family in Staten Island and saw the camera shaking there and said, what's going on? But no, that's what it was. And then a couple seconds later, I felt it here. So we felt this 4.8. 4.9 is where we start to see this threshold go from minimal to a little bit more moderate. But this is considered a minor one. It's just on the higher side of minor, which is why we felt it. So that's the first point of uh, no. The second is that once you start getting in that 4 to 5 magnitude range, that's when you potentially could see some structural damage. Now, we didn't see that in Philadelphia. And remember, it's still about 50 miles away from us. But also, this is one of those things where we're going to get more information from the epicenter and see if there is any damage in this direction here. So right now, that's the other thing. And the last case is that I want to point out that we may have some aftershocks. Typically, aftershocks are going to be much less than that 4.8 that we saw. So we might feel it. We may not. But it could happen today, it could happen tomorrow, it could ha happen in the next couple of days. Do not be alarmed. It's completely normal uh, to have, it, have that happen after. And most importantly, they will be much, much less, uh, much, much more minor than what we've already seen. So we're going to continue to watch this for you right now. And I know, Natasha, we have some live pictures and, of course, live updates uh, here in the Philly region. Yeah, we do, Andrew. Thank you so much. Now, Chopper 3 Live over 30th Street Station here. Workers inspecting the tracks. Here is what we see. Amtrak has uh, put it on their social media site right now. As of 11.05 a.m. Eastern Time, due to the 4.8 earthquake in New Jersey, Amtrak has initiated its track inspection protocol. Speed restrictions have been implemented throughout the Northeast until all inspections are completed. Again, checking those lines uh, is of utmost importance after an event like this, a rare event like this for the Northeast Corridor. The magnitude 4.8 earthquake happening there in White House Station, New Jersey. We are seeing the ripple effects all throughout the tri-state area and this being felt all the way up through Boston at this point. Uh, so we are going to stay on top of what's happening there on the rail lines infrastructure being of utmost importance here, making sure it's not been compromised in any way. Let's get right out to Ray Strickland. He is in Center City, Philadelphia now with the latest on what folks felt and heard here in the city. Ray. Yeah, so me and my photographer, we were actually inside of the Independence uh, Hall Visitor Center, and we were actually interviewing uh, someone. When he said he actually felt something, I didn't feel a thing, but he said he felt the ground shake for about 10 to 20 seconds. He thought it was someone just, you know, walking hard, but it was actually come to find out an earthquake. So I got curious because I didn't feel anything. So I started to ask people around Old City here and they kept telling me no, they didn't feel anything. And then a lot of people started to come up to me and say that they felt some. We spoke to a woman named Natasha who drives uh, for the city here doing some uh, tours around Philadelphia. She said she felt something and heard something and it reminded her of 12 years ago. Uh, take a listen. Actually, I heard, I thought we was getting like a, some type of thunderstorm. That had me looking up at the sky. But I noticed like the, the windows on the trucks in front of me was like shaking a little bit. I'm like, and the way our wind and our rain was this past week is like, it was expected. And I spoke to one of her coworkers, another person who drives and does city tours here in Philadelphia. He said his car was shaking. He had no idea it was an earthquake, so he looked behind him because he thought someone was shaking his car. It was an earthquake. That is something that many people still think is pretty crazy to happen, myself included, because, again, I didn't feel it. But clearly, the ground was shaking, and many people are just shocked that an earthquake had hit New Jersey and, of course, could be felt in Philadelphia. A lot to take care of right now for me, my photographer, and everyone I, t I spoke to around uh, O-City here.
All right, Ray, certainly shocking for all of us here in the Northeast and especially here in Philadelphia. Literally. Yeah. This, we, don't, we don't see this or feel this very often. So thank you so much, Ray. We do appreciate that. Let's get back over to Andrew now, who's been getting updates here uh, just on the epicenter out there in North Jersey and White House Station and what we know so far, Andrew. Yeah, I mean, well, White House Station is a, is a small community. It's just to the north and west of Bridgewater. You could see how close it is to New York City. For us, it's about 50 miles to the north and the east. So I've circled it here where this is along 22 south of 78. 78 takes you into uh, Pennsylvania. If you go to the west, it takes you through Brooklyn, Staten Island as you go toward the east, and it's right in the central area of northern New Jersey. This is where the epicenter is 4.8. It happened around 10.23 this morning. 10.23 and 19 seconds, actually, to be precise, with the USGS about a mile down in depth. And again, this is something that is more on the rare side of things. When you start getting in that four and five, that's where you start to see some damage. Now, we haven't had any reports just yet, and of course, it will always depend on the structure itself. But what we're seeing here with that 4.8 is the fact that we have not had an earthquake in this region that has been this close uh, and this magnitude since about 2011. And I mentioned this a couple times earlier that usually it's not rare for us to see a couple of two to three uh, magnitude earthquakes here, little ones. Usually you don't see them, usually you don't feel them, well, you never see them, but you never feel them. But this is something different. This is a little bit stronger. Now, the further you get out from the center of it, let me go back to where the center is. The further you get out from the area of White House, the more you're going to feel it a little bit less. So that's why we didn't feel, we felt the shaking here, but we didn't feel it like they did likely in central and northern New Jersey. So this is where we're going to continue to watch and get some reports if we have any damage, if we have anything like that. A lot of precautions being taken right now because an earthquake can affect so many things, transportation, infrastructure. So that's why there may be some delays. I know Natasha told us there may be some delays at some of the area airports. Philadelphia right now may experience some delays. I would say Newark Airport. Call ahead to your carriers. Give yourself some extra time because likely, since that is so much closer, Newark Airport located right there along 95, not that far away, about 30-something miles away, uh, maybe a little less actually from where White House Station is, you might see some delays, uh, possibly some cancellations as they go. And, of course, most importantly, check the tarmac, check those runways. In the meantime, SEPTA's running on time. We've had officials, including the governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, talk about uh, how we are aware of this and checking everything out. This is also a good time to remember that aftershocks are something that we could potentially see with this. And that is just little mini quakes after the big one. So 4.8 is where we were. We may have aftershocks that you may feel or you may not feel, but certainly do not be alarmed if you feel a little shaking. It could happen later today. It could happen tonight. It could happen over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, one other point before, uh, Natasha, before I send it back over to you, is you probably will have children asking a lot of questions about this. And if you have young children, this might be the first time they felt the hot shake. And of course, it can be scary. And as a, as a science person, I'd say take this opportunity to go to the library and check out books about earthquakes and get educated about it. Because even though this is a rare occurrence here, it's still something that obviously by today we know can happen. Uh, and it's if more than anything, especially once we under, uh, understand and confirm that we don't have any uh, major issues or problems from this here in our area, uh, to educate kids about it. Talk about earthquakes. It's a, it's a very interesting phenomenon, and it's something, again, that uh, today's proven. You don't have to live on a fault. You don't have to live out in California to experience your house or your building shaking underneath one. All right, Andrew, thank you so much. We do appreciate that. Right now, the news at noon is starting and breaking here at noon on CBS News Philadelphia. Did you feel it? A magnitude 4.8 earthquake shook our area. This is video from Havertown, windows rattling and a lantern swinging with no wind blowing at all. This is all from the earthquake. The newsroom shook here in Philadelphia as well. We all felt it and immediately our phone started ringing. Social media lit up with people asking what just happened? It's a good question. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Natasha Brown in for Jim today. The U.S. Geological Survey says 4.8 magnitude earthquakes. That's the preliminary report that is a 4.8. The epicenter was in White House Station, New Jersey. That's Hunterdon County. There are reports of shaking felt throughout southeastern Pennsylvania, northern Delaware, New York, Connecticut, Baltimore, and other areas of the Northeast, even Boston, we're hearing. We have live team coverage for you. Meteorologist Andrew Cozy.
Zach will have more on the quake from the scientific perspective on for us, the point of view there. Ryan Hughes is live now. He's at Temple University uh, with an expert there to tell us more about this. But let's start with Marcella Bayeto in Center City with reaction from people who felt the shaking. Very jarring, Marcella. Good afternoon, Natasha. Yes, very jarring. We're here right behind me, the parkway and near Logan Square. And a lot of people are just, you know, carrying on with their day. Many people just walking around with their dogs, going on a run, just taking in the uh, bit of sun that we have for today as of now. Many people that we spoke to had no idea about the earthquake. A few of them did feel it. But you know what? We've also seen SEPTA and some announcements from our local transportation agency. SEPTA, though, saying that there's no damages no interruptions to report as of now. But when it comes to PATCO, they currently have suspended their services. They have crews out there also assessing the integrity of their line. Now, we don't have a timeline or a time frame of when that will be back up and running, but we, of course, will look into that for you all. As of here, though, you know what? We spoke to some people that are really coming in for WWE, many tourists in the area, and they were surprised to hear that this even happened. No, no, we were at the Redeem Market Terminal and somebody asked us if we felt it and we were like, what, an earthquake? <laughs> People have been talking about it. I've been walking down the boulevard um, and my friends contacted me from Boston and they were like, I came from L.A. So they're like, you brought the earthquakes with you. Yeah, you know, we're just like you said, Natasha, we've heard of some people out in Boston around, you know, the East Coast area feeling those waves. Um, but as of now, back here on the parkway, we also did reach out to the American Red Cross of southeastern Pennsylvania. They say as of now, they're standing down. They are not mobilizing yet, but they are urging people to stay prepared and stay aware when it comes to earthquakes. We also reached out to a Drexel University expert. He's a forensic structural engineer. He says as of now, because the magnitude was only a 4.8 earthquake. He believes there won't be too much of an impact to our local buildings and our local structures. As of now, we will be having a more in-depth conversation with him later today. But as of now, we'll continue to bring you some more information as all of this unfolds. Live here near the Parkway, Marcella Bayetto, CBS News, Philadelphia. Natasha. All right, Marcella, thank you so much. Now let's get out to Ryan Hughes now live. He is joining us from Temple University. Ryan. Hey there, Natasha. Good afternoon. Yeah, we have been speaking with staff and students here on campus. Many of them telling me, yes, they did, in fact, feel that earthquake uh, earlier this morning. Right now, we have some students walking around campus. Classes are still going on as scheduled. But I did talk to one student. He says he was sitting at a table when it just started shaking. Another student tells me he was up on the fifth floor lying on his bed when all of a sudden he felt the bed shake and didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, we also had the chance to speak with an expert. Uh, Nick Devot says he's an associate professor in the Earth and Environmental Science Department. He tells me he was on the second floor uh, in a room and for about 10 to 15 seconds he thought he felt that shaking and didn't realize right away what was going on and then after the fact he realized it was an earthquake. We asked him, you know, with your experience studying science, is it rare to experience an earthquake like this in the Northeast? I was surprised when he says no. Take a listen. It's expected. So, you know, throughout the region, we expect earthquakes of this magnitude and, and many, many more that are smaller to be happening all the time. Uh, this size quake tends to happen on longer time scales relative to human lives. So, you know, yeah, years to decades. But you may remember uh, more recently, like the earthquake down near Washington. Uh, a little over a decade ago, and then if you look back in the record, you'll see that sort of thing happening in the past. What can we expect after this earthquake? W will there be reports of damage, and, and what may that look like? There might be reports of damage, especially closer to the site. Th there should be minor damage at this sized quake, things like cracked windows, stuck windows, stuck doors. Um, this sort of quake, especially given construction practice that we enforce in the United States, helped prevent any significant damage. And we also asked the professor, now that we had the earthquake, can we expect to feel aftershocks? He says, yes, we likely will have some aftershocks, but they will likely be smaller and we probably won't even feel them. Uh, Natasha, as you can imagine, this has been the talk of the campus. We're going to be gathering more reaction to this, but a lot of people telling us they did feel that earthquake 
earlier this morning. For now, though, we are live in North Philadelphia. Ryan Hughes, Natasha, back to you. All right, Ryan, thank you so much. Certainly the talk of the city and the whole tri state area here. We do appreciate that. And let's check in with meteorologist Andrew Kozak. Andrew, you were on a Zoom call at the time with your dad in Staten Island earlier when this happened? Yeah, actually, it's funny because we have the eclipse on Monday, right? So I'm talking to my dad, who's a NASA ambassador, and I wanted to get this thing going for social media. And we're talking, and I, I'm talking to him, and he's looking around, and I'm seeing something shake. And I said, Dad, Dad, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he's like, I, I think that, I think the house is shaking. I think we're having an earthquake. And you hear my mom in the background going, I think we're having an earthquake. So, yeah, and that's Staten Island. Now that's even closer to the epicenter. We're talking about 30 miles away. We're about 50 miles away here in Philadelphia, 50 miles to the north and the east. So let's talk about where we are now. There's Philly. There's Bridgewater along 78 and 22. Where this actual epicenter is, is across White House, which is just a few miles to the north and west of Bridgewater. We're talking now a 4.8 magnitude. It happened at 1023. Uh, and I circle that a little bit bigger just to kind of show you the 50 miles from where you see our logo down there and then over toward uh, where the actual epicenter is. That's not by comparison a very big distance. Uh, the deal here is that the further you go out, like a concentric circle, away from the epicenter, the less you're going to feel it. So the chances that we have any damage in our area, very slim to none. Of course, we're still going to assess and get fresh information. But the closer you get up toward the area of where the epicenter was of this earthquake, a 4.8. It's not major. It's actually still considered minor, anything under a 4.9, but it's getting a little bit closer. And four to five is when you start seeing some minor damage. I know Ryan interviewed a student there who said maybe some cracked windows, things like that. Anything that's poorly built might have a little bit of damage. So I'm sure folks up here will have to inspect that a little bit. But that's where we stand for that now. And yes, there may be some aftershocks. They're likely going to be minor in the two to three range. You may not even feel it. Quick check of your weather because we do want to touch on that. We might see a sprinkle or a shower across southern New Jersey. Right now I am looking at a few showers. This is going to be to the south and just to the west of Millville right now. A quick sprinkle. That might be it for today. In the meantime, this is what it looks like down toward Brigantine, Atlantic City. We have some thickening clouds out there. Plymouth meeting also some overcast skies. Next couple of hours, we'll stay in the upper 40s and low 50s. A relatively dry day today. Again, a quick sprinkle or two. Temperatures in the low 50s. Lehigh Valley a little cooler at 47 degrees. Coming up, a rogue sprinkle or a shower, then we're finally going to dry out, then we'll finally warm up. All of that, plus, of course, the very latest on anything to do with our earthquake there in New Jersey. All of that with your full forecast in a few minutes. Andrew, thank you so much. Now, when the shaking stopped, people turned to social media, of course. Temple University on X asking the question we were all asking each other. Who felt that question mark? Just to give you an idea of how many people did feel it, author Miles Howard asked, did we just have a brief earthquake in Boston? That's more than 220 miles away from the epicenter in New Jersey. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy shared online that the state's emergency operations center has been activated and reminds people to not call 911 unless you have an actual emergency. Right now, PATCO has suspended service out of an abundance of caution. Actually, I'm seeing uh, here that they just tweeted that service is now back resuming normally uh, after an inspection of its equipment. Amtrak says that speed restrictions are in place all throughout all of their routes in the Northeast Corridor until inspections are completed. New Jersey Transit has some delays as well as crews on that line inspect bridges. SEPTA, meantime, is running normally at this hour. Our Brandon Goldner is live at the Patco station in Collingswood. Brandon, what can you tell us? We understand that service has resumed there. Is that the case? So that is the case in the New Jersey side. Between Lindenwald and Camden City Hall, PATCO has resumed service. When we spoke to them about 15 minutes ago, they were checking the lines in Philadelphia to make sure there were no issues with any tracks or anything along those lines. What they actually do is they have a basically a pickup truck that has tracks that has uh, tracks on it that can go through the railroad tracks and do a visual inspection to check for any issues, any signs of damage. So when we last spoke to PATCO, it was about 15 minutes ago. It was on the Ben Franklin Bridge and it was expected to, around this time, get to 15th, 16th Street Station, which is the end of the PATCO line in Philadelphia. We are seeing some people waiting on the tracks right now, waiting for a train to come through. We did see a train come through heading on to Lindenwald Station. 
We haven't seen a train yet coming in through uh, Camden City Hall. Excuse me, Camden City Hall. Right now, we saw a lot of people who are out here uh, just waiting to uh, get uh, ATCO service resume. It was really all just so odd because the train stopped. They're like, there's a delay due to signaling. We're like, okay, you know, it's the FATCO. Then they're like, actually, everybody off the train and then everybody out the station. And they're like, yeah, the train shut down. They put you know, little warning cones in front of the doors, and that was just that. And we'll keep you posted once PACO resumes full normal operations. Back to you, Natasha. All right, Brandon, thank you so much. Now stay with CBS News Philadelphia for the very latest on the earthquake that shook our region. When we're not on television, you can always get the latest on our streaming channel, on our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. We'll be right back with more earthquake coverage. Well, we are continuing to follow breaking news here at noon after a 4.8 magnitude earthquake shook the region this morning. We just received an update from the mayor's office. We're told a preliminary assessment of City Hall and other nearby municipal buildings shows no signs of any kind of structural damage. There are also no reports of any injuries in this area. And the city wants to reiterate the fact that you should not call 911 about the earthquake or possibly any aftershocks or tremors unless you have have an actual emergency to report. They don't want to clog up the lines. Now, Chopper 3 is live meantime over 30th Street Station. Workers are inspecting the tracks to make sure everything is safe. Right now, Amtrak and SEPTA are operating on normal schedules. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake did rock our area at about 10:23 this morning. The epicenter was in White House Station, New Jersey. That's Hunterdon County, about 50 miles or so away from here. But the shaking was also felt throughout our area, even here in Center City, Philadelphia. CBS News reporter Ray Strickland is at Sixth and Market Streets, right in the heart of the city. There, talking with folks who felt this very, very surprising and jarring event today. Ray. And I guess I'm the only one in the city who didn't feel it. I was inside of Independence uh, Visitor Center doing an interview uh, on an entirely different story, of course, and I didn't feel a thing. And then my photographer says, hey, did you feel that shaking? Felt like someone was uh, walking hard or running behind me. My camera was shaking. He said, I felt like an earthquake. I'm like, oh, you're crazy, man. It wasn't an earthquake. And then, of course, Tammy sends us all an email saying it was a 4.7, 4.8 magnitude earthquake. And I honestly, I still can't believe it. But I got curious, so I started to kind of walk around uh, the city here to kind of talk to some people to see if they felt it. I spoke to two drivers who are a part of like the city tours here uh, in Philadelphia and they said they felt and heard it. I was surprised to hear what they had to say. Take a listen. I was sitting in my touring car here and mind my own business and I thought somebody was playing a joke and the car was shaking side to side. I kept looking but I didn't, even, didn't get out. Actually I heard. I thought we was getting like a, some type of thunderstorm. That had me looking up at the sky. But I noticed like the, the windows in the trucks in front of me was like shaking a little bit. So many people I spoke to shocked, surprised, can't believe it, disbelief. All those words you hear, yes, all of that is real for many people today, including myself. Um, but the good thing is no one was injured in this earthquake from what we're hearing. And that's the good news out of all of it, I'm sure, yeah. All right, that is certainly good news. Thank you so much, Ray. Well, this morning's earthquake is having a ripple effect all across the Northeast, up and down the Northeast Corridor. CBS News correspondent Michael George is live in Times Square there. So what did you feel, Michael? Natasha, what I felt is what thousands of people here in the New York area felt, which it started with some mild shaking, and a lot of people thought at first this must be construction, not an unusual occurrence here in New York City. But after 20, 30 seconds of that shaking starting to intensify, it was unmistakably an earthquake. Now, the people who felt this the most tended to be in buildings, either at work or at home, and the higher up you are in terms of floors, the stronger you felt it. Meanwhile, we're here in Times Square. A lot of people we've been talking to out here, the tourists say they didn't feel it at all because they were out here on the street. Now, the good news, no reports of any injuries, no reports of any serious damage here in the New York City and New Jersey areas, even though we're much closer to where this, uh, where the epicenter was, which is about 40 miles west of New York City. But I can tell you from the U.N. to office buildings to places all over this city, people did feel it. So a lot of people startled, a lot of people shaken up, no pun intended. But we haven't heard reports of things falling off the walls, significant damage. Uh, right now, a lot of people are just surprised to see this. We haven't had an earthquake of this intensity in a long time. In fact, it's one of the strongest earthquakes felt in New York 
York City recorded history. So right now, a lot of people are still trying to assess whether there is some damage. We do have a lot of old infrastructure here, but the good news, no reports of any significant damage or injuries in the New York City area. We're reporting right now live in Times Square. Michael George, Natasha, back to you. All right, Michael, thank you so much. We do appreciate that. Now, more coverage of the 4.8 magnitude earthquake for you when we come right back. Stay with us. Well, this just in from Manville, New Jersey. A confused dog here was startled by the sudden shaking. Manville is about 20 miles away from White House Station, even closer to the epicenter of where this quake happened. Oh, my goodness. Well, even the little doggies were scared. I can imagine that. Stay with CBS News Philadelphia for the latest on this earthquake that shook our area. When we're not on television, you can always get the latest on our streaming channel and on our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. That's going to do it for us at noon, everyone. I'm Natasha Brown. For all of us, thank you so much for watching. The news at 4 will have the latest as well. And whenever news breaks, you can always get that online, cbsphiladelphia.com. The Young and the Restless is next.